choppy waters for the shipping industry today. The Baltic Dry Index measuring commodity shipping costs suffering its sixth consecutive fall because of fleet expansion and weaker demand to haul grain. Now, in spite of all this, my next guest sees some opportunities in the sector. Here to tell us more about some potential market hotspots, analyst Natasha Boyden following the shipping industry for Cantor Fitzgerald. Natasha is top ranked on a number of stocks, including DHT Holdings, Free Seas, and Safe Bulkers. Natasha, always a pleasure to have you. Thank you. So what's the state of the dry bulk shipping industry in more than one word? <laughs> in more than one in word. more than the word awful. Uh, well, that is certainly one word I would choose to uh, certainly sum up the Cape size rates. Uh, they've not been doing well. Um, as you pointed out rightly in your, in your introduction, the uh, amount of supply of ships coming on has just been swamping demand. Uh, we so the order books really did come through? We did see a lot of slippage and cancellations, but not enough to offset um, really the the, uh, the 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 amount that was coming through via scrapping, which wasn't enough to offset the number of ships coming in. So we do see some bright spots in the smaller ships, though the Supermaxes, the Panamaxes. They're hauling grain, coal, uh, some of the minor bulks. They've been holding up a lot better. Um, we certainly see significant coal demand coming out of India and China. Uh, we see grain demand certainly um, out of the U.S. going into Asia is also pretty strong. So those rates have been holding up somewhat better. But uh, Cape sizes? Sounds like great. then you have to be very particular yes. about the stocks that you invest in. Yes. Tell us about Safe Bulkers. Mm -hmm. Well, Safe Bulkers has about, uh, has about uh, 15 ships on the water. They do have some eight capes, but they have a number of smaller ships as well. What we like about them is they have um, a pretty solid balance sheet, and they have 11 ships coming in um, that they've ordered, uh, and they're coming in to uh, grow the fleet. And they've obviously been able to finance those um, through equity offerings. The market's been fairly receptive to their equity offerings. Uh, which you know a number of companies have struggled with in this market. Um, they also have a very nice dividend, about a seven percent yield, which we think is pretty safe given the long-term contracts that they have. And that's one thing that I want to point out to our, all of our investors is that we're telling people to invest in long-term contracts. People that have those charters right. that are already signed yes. and with good customers. With good customers, good exactly. That's a very good point. Good counterparties, long-term contracts is the way to go in this market. What about another company? I know you follow Diana. Mm -hmm. What's the status there? Another, Same thing. Another great company, uh, long-term contracts they have um, they've been buying ships we, what we like about the Diana is that balance sheet is the strongest in the industry they have they're gonna have about 450 million in cash on the balance sheet next year which enables them to go out and buy assets you know one of the bright spots of the, the down market is the asset values have come down and if you are in a position I you have a good balance sheet you can really go out and take advantage of those cheaper asset values by buying them up have we seen any big problems with any of the shipping companies? In other words, any of them going out of business because you were talking Cape size mm -hmm. rates of $3,000 yeah. a day. You yeah. can't you can't pay the crew and keep right. the ships afloat right. for that kind of money. I mean, we haven't yet. Um, in the tanker space, we've certainly seen a, a couple of companies that have been struggling um, and needing to do some serious balance sheet surgery um, in order to stay afloat. We haven't yet seen anything to that extent in the dry bulk, but if this carries on, I, I would think that perhaps there will be some companies that will struggle and will have to refinance. And then point. you look at the companies that have the cash and they're the ones that are going to be able to take advantage. Exactly. Tell me about Navios Maritime Acquisition. Navios this was a, Acquisition. A, a, acquisition. Yeah. This was a company that was formed specifically mm -hmm. to buy assets. Right. Now, this is in the tanker space. This Correct. is in the dry bulk space. Um, very interesting company. They have gone out and they basically have bought assets, again, at the bottom of the market. They've bought a number of product tanks which will be delivered in the next two years. But what we really like is they have uh, six VLCCs on charter anywhere between seven and 16 years. Which seven is and 16 years for those very two, large crude carriers. Exactly, which is the, the longest by far out of any of the companies we cover. And the average rate of those contracts is $40,000 a day, whereas the current rate is about 12. I bet they're happy so. they signed those contracts. <laughs> very. And that means very. good news, what, in terms of the yield? Good news in terms of the yield. They have about a 5.5% yield. The contracts are solid. Um, they have insurance. So even if one of the counterparties did happen to uh, break a contract, they would have insurance on that. All right. I want to thank name. you very much, Natasha. Boyd and Hupman to us uh, from uh, Cantor Fitzgerald. Always uh, interesting and uh, please appreciate you getting your insights. Tough thank time you. right now in the shipping yes. industry. Thank you.